Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to the Scottish Wedding Show and the Let's Talk Tying the Knot stage. My name's Olivia Simpson, I'm staff writer with Tie the Knot Scotland, Scotland's number one wedding magazine. You can come and see us on our stand which is 428F, just over there by the catwalk and you can pick up a copy for free at the back of this space just here. We've put together a programme of informative talks and Q&As from some of Scotland's leading wedding industry experts that will hopefully offer lots of practical advice and inspiration to guide you on your journey to the top of the aisle. In a moment, I'll pass over to our celebrant and at the end will be an opportunity for a Q&A, so please do save any questions for the end. So, I'm joined on stage by two celebrants from Humanist Society Scotland, who you'll find today on stand 431C, just at the back there. Humanist Society Scotland are the largest and longest standing provider of humanist ceremonies in Scotland. They have over 100 registered celebrants across Scotland, performing thousands of ceremonies each year. If you've been to a Scottish wedding recently, chances are you'll have witnessed a hand fasting, which is the symbolic tying of the knot with tartan or cords that's hugely popular with couples right now. But did you know there are many other options for gestures and rituals that will help you put some personality into your ceremony? And our celebrants here will run us through some options. So, over to you, David and Jane. Don't clap yet, I haven't said anything. So I haven't really prepped very much. This is either going to be flawless, informative, brilliant, and the best thing you'll see all day, or an absolute car crash. There's no in between. Uh, my name is David, that one is Jane. The brief we were given was talk about symbolic gestures, and there are so many. But when you are talking about Scottish weddings, there are things that you will see time and time again. If you are having a, uh, watching a Scottish film or you're making a Scottish TV show and you want to symbolise a Scottish wedding with plenty of tartan and Highland coos with Mel Gibson or Sam Hewn, you will have hand fasting or you will have a quake because they are the two big Scottish gestures that you will see time and time again. The thing to remember about your wedding, I would say, is if you are going to have a gesture, have a gesture that you like the sound of, that, you, that means something to you, or that you can tweak to make mean something to you. So when you're having a hand fasting, traditionally it would be two bits of tartan. That's what you see, or one bit of tartan and one bit of the dress after it's been altered. But I have done it with rope. I have done it with two dog leads because they met walking their dogs. That's not strictly true. He was walking his pal's dog, met her, and then went back and walked his pal's dog every week at the same time and they hoped to meet her again and finally confessed that he was kind of stalking her but they ended up married so it was fine. Anything that can tie will work. So you don't need to use those very traditional ideas. The trick is to think about who you are, what is your life, what is your personality. Um, so we'll, we'll do a wee demo of that in, in a bit. The other big Scottish thing you're talking about is the quay because that's drinking and everyone loves a drink at the wedding. Don't wait till the drinks reception, have one in the middle of your ceremony. Traditionally, whiskey. Which is fine if you both like whiskey. If you don't like whiskey, then your wedding photograph is going to be this. That's not what you want in your wedding photograph. So, have the thing that you love. Have the thing that you enjoy. I have done it with gin and tonic, Prosecco, vodka and orange. I have done it with tonic wine. I didn't think they would go for it. The man suggested it. I thought he was kidding. But that is literally all he drank. He drinks it on a Friday when they're relaxing at home. Go him. Make the choices that better reflect who you are as a person. And so what they did was they had a very fancy looking whiskey box on the table. And we got to that bit and I'm talking about the quake and I'm telling people what it means and you're sharing from the cup of life and all these big celebrity works that you find at these moments in your ceremony. And he went over to the table and he took the top off the box and he lifted the bottle of tonic wine out. And there was about three seconds where nobody reacted and I thought, I've really misread this. I've got this wrong. Because I was going, do it, it'll be brilliant. Do it, it's you, your guests will love it and he lifted it out and nobody did anything. And I stared at him like, I don't know. And then the people in the crowd saw what he was holding 
and about three seconds later they went, Way! and the room erupted. And it was perfect because it was him. It was exactly what people expected and that's what your wedding should be. And I have done hundreds of weddings and people say, I don't want gestures. I don't want to perform. I don't want the pressure to do it. That's also fine. The trick is to find a celebrant who will tell your story in the way that you want it told and to do it in the way that you want it done because your ceremony is not lacking for the absence of a gesture. What we're trying to do is to build in more meaning to those moments for you. There are things which you will not have heard about. This year I have done three log songs which have a, yeah, that was my reaction. It is exactly what you think it is the big saw with the two handles and at the end of the ceremony you come back to the front and you saw a lot. What we learned after the first time was to saw about halfway through before you start because for the first time we did it we were about 15 minutes in. The bride's eyelashes were now down here. I'm like keep going we're almost there and they're like <laughs> and then something. Anyway it's German in its background. It is meant to represent working together to overcome the obstacles that life will put in your path. Why, why sawing a log is the thing that, that represents that, I don't know. But I've had it three times this year because people are starting to look at what is the new thing, what is different, what else can we do, what is, what is symbolic, what is meaningful, but what's not the thing we've seen a hundred other times. You also have cutting the sheet. You get to the end of the aisle, two guests hold up a sheet, you get a pair of scissors each and you have to cut a love heart out of it and then step through, that's the end of the ceremony. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. But it looked brilliant in the photographs. To be fair, there's a fair bit in the video where we're standing at the back like, what? But again, it came from his family side. I've had the Jewish tradition of smashing the glass, which is really dramatic, but test it. Make sure you buy a glass that you can, because see if you do that and it's really thick and it doesn't break, it's really embarrassing especially when she had to do it because he was like, no matter. So practice, practice, practice. Jane is the queen of hand fasting. All of my couples, when we talk about hand fasting, and they say, what kind is there? There's single-handed, there's double-handed, there's more than one. Some people want a hand fast if they have kids and they're going to blend their family and they do four and four hands in the thing, four bits of material. It's so complicated and see when it works, it is magic. Everyone just goes, oh my god. So all my couples I say, search Jane. Jane's got videos on YouTube and they're dead clear and you get to see what you're going to do but always be thinking about, well who are we? What are the other things we can do? Other big Scottish stuff is the Oathing Stone. That is, again, a lot of them are kind of probably bizarre really because you're basically holding a stone and then so someone holds it and the other person puts their hand on top and you make your vows into the stone and it's to do with the Celtic connection to the land and the, you know, the, the area that you lived in. There are lots of modern expressions which come from these things, so tying the knot is effectively what you're doing with a handfast. When you set something in stone, that's what you're doing with an oathing stone. You're going to speak into that and then you have your stone as a keepsake. You can have just a stone or find one from a place that matters to you, or buy one because you can get them decorated and you know make it a bit more personal, have a keepsake. Make sure you can comfortably hold it for two or three minutes because if we're still doing the vows and you're like, because you've decided to pick the boulder out of the garden where you grew up, you need to prep, you need to be prepared and you need to think about the, re the practicality. But our job as celebrants is to tell you about these things and to discuss, well, what did you think? What have you seen? If you are going to any wedding between now and your wedding day, you will not be attending as a guest. You will be attending as a critic and reviewer, where you will spend the entire day going, we're not doing that. And that's fine, because that's the whole purpose of these things. That's what today is all about. I met a couple at 12 o'clock. I said, how long have you been here? They said, two hours. I went, mean, how far round have you gone? She went second row. I thought the man was going to kill himself. He was like, he was just holding 19 bags by that point. Like, oh my God. But you come and think about who you are. So, I think so. It's not for everyone. Really popular in elopements. Really popular for people who are outdoorsy or gardeners. Or that, that's the sort of thing that will work and it will resonate with your guests as well. 
blended families and fasting, there is a way to do it with more than one, two bits of material. Sand ceremony, I had never heard of it. And then all of a sudden, it came massively into kind of wedding consciousness. And I've done probably 20 this year. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Everyone has sand and you take turns pouring and you end up with this really pretty, really lovely design. But the same rules apply. It's meant to be a keepsake. It's meant to be on display in your house. Don't let the kids pick their own colours because you're going to end up with something that's black and grey and pink and yellow and it will look disgusting. Keep control of that element of it. But it's a great way to talk about how you bring your family together because that's the purpose of sand. When it joins, you can still see the separate colours, but you cannot separate the grains, and that's what you're doing with your family. So a lot of these things, they are symbolic, but it's about how we talk about them and what we, how we describe that symbolism to your guests when they're there. The guests should also get something from that experience. Uh, so this is also relatively new. The time capsule or the anniversary box. You're meant to take a box, and you can either have your guests involved in this, so everyone writes a wee message for you, and you put it in, and in a year, on your first year anniversary, you open the box, and you read the messages that your guests left. You can also put in a letter to each other on the day of your wedding. We're about to get married, this is what I think, here's how I feel. Put in some booze, drink that a year down the line. Put in messages from people you love, put in messages from each other, put in whatever represents you on your day. There are so many ways you need to speak to your celebrant about that. Talk to them about who are you? What is the thing that represents you? What is the thing that, do you want to include a gesture that doesn't involve you, that you don't have to be performing? So we'll do a band warming, because then the best man will take the rings to the front and they make their way around the room and everyone gets to be involved. But you don't have to do that thing where you're standing at the front going, I hate this, but everyone's staring at me. I have many couples who don't enjoy the prospect of being stared at. Getting married is a strange thing to do if you don't enjoy being stared at because it's the day that it will happen. But there are ways that we can make it better for you, that we can make it more relaxed, more enjoyable. Every photograph that you want to see in your wedding is of you smiling and laughing and enjoying yourself and not standing going, Oh my God, this is terrible. Yesterday I did a hand fast, it was only two. They had their kids involved. They, they wanted the kids to do the tying. So the kids came up, it was brilliant, looked lovely. They were so proud. And I'm like, right, stand there, do the thing I showed you. Remember I showed you a minute ago, do that thing. So because I'd showed them from the other angle that I normally do it, it didn't work. So we got to the end and I said, and now, having made your vows, take one step back, pull the tie towards yourself, and in doing so, you will tie the knot. And I stepped off to the side, and the couple pulled the two ties, and they were standing separately, holding two bits of material. I was like, your kids ruined that for you. I'm just saying it wasn't me. So, these things happen. We're not perfect. We're not robots. It might not work the first time. It worked flawlessly the second time, thank God, because otherwise I was just going to leave. They used material that she'd made, because she, she's big on crochet and knitting, so she did it herself. They look great, they look homemade, that's okay, that's fine, it doesn't have to be perfect. So, one of the things we were told about doing was audience participation. No one sits in the front row because they think if we sit in the front row they'll pick on us. Who's getting married? Come on then. Unfortunately, we have a quake, but it's empty because we weren't allowed to bring booze. But there is a bar just behind us. And there'll be ones that have got booze. Make sure you find them. And the cake people. Go and try cake. Lots of. Okay. <laughs> you go on my left. You go on my right. So, I'll come out there and All right, so, hand fasting, dead easy, single-handed, can't go wrong. Two bits of material. These are my um, practice oblique spares, oblique stand-ins, because sometimes you arrive at the venue and you say, have you got the marriage license? Yes, there it is. And if you've got your hand fast material, I wish I'd brought the coffee table, because that's where they are. So, I always have spares. Your celebrant will have spares. I have a quake, I have all the stuff you need. Right. <coughs> so, right hand to right hand. This one works really well if you are inclined to read your own vows because it leaves you a free hand that we can hand them to you on a card. Again, when you talk about reading your own vows, some people go, ah, I'd rather 
kill myself than speak out loud. Yeah. The trick is to make it look really fancy and really difficult, but keep it really easy so it actually works. As I learned yesterday. Beautiful. Nice, great for your photographs. The other thing to think about when you're picking hand fast and stuff is will it not, but will it not in a way you can see it? You can order hand fast materials on Amazon. They're about four centimeters wide and about half a millimeter thick, and it looks like a shoelace you're tied. You can't see it in your picture, don't buy them. It's a great saving because they're only six pounds, but it's called they're cheap. Yeah, sorry, terrible. Two bits of material. We're at this point here. If you are the celebrant, you have the choice of, I'm going to ask you your vows as a question. Will you love them, look after them, bring them joy, bring them happiness, bring them laughter, take the bins out, make their breakfast on a Sunday, and always make sure that you want the dog when it's raining? Yes, I will. And then I will. Or we will, and you answer together, and you'll go through these things. Or, if you want to read yourself, I'll hand you them in a wee bit of cart, and I'll step out so that your photograph is you looking at each other with love in your eyes, deep in your heart, and not with me behind you doing this, because that's a hellish picture. And then we get to the end, and all you're going to do is just see the bit you're holding in between your legs, hold there, and just pull your arm back. Pull, 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 and pull, and pull. And you end up with a big knot in the centre. It's dead easy, it can't go wrong. That's your flawless one. Simple, simple, simple. Dead, pull, right? Now, Forearm before arm. I like this one because it's dead showy. It gives you a wee moment at the end where you're like. Are you, are you yours? <laughs> no, because it didn't work yesterday, so I'm stressing about that. Yeah, if it didn't work, I'm freaking out. <laughs> Jane does it differently from me. So I'm going to learn this one because hopefully that will stop it not working. <laughs> so, same thing, two bits of material. This one you cannot read your own vows because you don't have a free hand. If they were very short, we could have them printed in the book really large. And when he was going to read, I would stand here with them like that. But again, I'm going to be in your photographs, so you probably don't want that. Yes. This is kind of what I do. <laughs> okay, so we get to this point, and again, it's vows. And will you do this, and will you do that, and have love, and joy, and happiness, and break breakfast, and all the rest of it. Now, for this one, you're going to Right? So we get to the vows. Thank you very much. In doing so, take one step back, holding on to your bit of the material, and you will tie the knot. And that's it. Step back and pull in. Hands in, hands in, hands in, and pull tight, pull tight, pull tight. <laughs> and that's why we practice. But that one, dead easy. You do it. It works. You go. And I'm not standing behind you going, I just made them married. Thank you very much. Big round of applause for our glamorous assistants. And so the last thing I'm going to tell you about is the last one that I use on a more often basis, which is candles. There is a religious element to that, a religious background to it that some people still feel, and actually it can still work, and it can still be the thing that you want to use to se represent your joining together. Separate candles for you and your separate lives, a unity candle at the end of the ceremony to represent your joined life and the one thing that brings you together. Sometimes there is a fourth candle which is for family who cannot be there. Don't be afraid to talk about the things that matter to you, to your celebrant, because we will work with you to make sure that the ceremony you end up with is the one that you love. Also, when you are picking a celebrant, ask them, if you break your leg on the morning of my wedding, what happens to my wedding? And the answer should be nothing, because your wedding should not be held hostage by my life. Human Society Scotland have the promise, which is if something happens to your celebrant on the day of your wedding, we'll send another one to marry you at the place with the words that you've agreed. That's how it should be. I've been up in Creer doing three weddings for a colleague who fell down the stairs. I'm trying not to laugh when I say it, because every time I say she fell down the stairs, I laugh. And I don't know why, because it was bad. She fell down the stairs, she couldn't. She's in a chair for her. 
I nearly got through the whole thing without saying the F word. My mother will be proud. But I've been up to Korea because she couldn't do their wedding. But they, the, that, the couple can't not get married. Ask your celebrant what happens to our wedding if something happens to you. And the answer should always be, your wedding will happen. Thank you very much for coming to my TED talk. I will pass you back to our glamorous host. Hello, yes, that one's working. So thank you so much. That was very informative and fun, and I don't think anyone noticed the bad words. It's fine. Um, did we have any questions from the audience? No? We've had enough audience participation from this couple here. Yeah? Do, yeah? One of them is about the hand fasting. So I need to move away from the speaker. One of them is about the hand fasting, and that is, you mentioned, um, what even is the actor's name? Sam Hewen. No, the other Mel one. Gibson. Mel Gibson. According, according to rumor, the hand fasting used in that, in that film is the only historically accurate part of the whole movie, which is a line that I often, if you've got people from south of the border and from other parts of the world and you're explaining Scottish traditions that can be quite a nice line to drop in I also believe that the Latin used in that ceremony is correct for the period which is amazing when you consider that nothing else about the film is historically accurate at all <laughs> never seen oh you have to see it you have to see it I don't drink whiskey either yeah I'll pass that back to you well, so we're debunking all the myths today, including Braveheart. So thank you. Very revealing. Are we sure we have no questions? No? Okay, well, they will be on stand 431C. My eyesight is failing me now, but I'm sure that's the right number. It's just there in the corner. So if we don't want to talk with a microphone in our hands, go and grab them for a wee question there. Thank you so much for coming to watch, and thank you um, to you two as well. Thank you. Perfect.